Pat, it's Max once here, this time with a review of the ETEC City Laser Grip 630, Amazon's number one bestseller. Truly no joke. And I can see why. It's generally okay. It has a backlit screen. It actually has two dots. This is a 16 and 1. How these work is they are essentially calibrated to measure a one inch circle. And they kind of average the temperature of that circle. A 16 and 1 means or whatever ratio, 12 and 1, 20 and 1, means that since it's a ratio of that one inch circle, when you're 16 inches back from whatever you're measuring, that's going to be the diameter of the area that you're checking. So if you're much further back, say 32 inches, then it's going to be a two inch area. And obviously the closer you get, the tighter the circle. So as you go further back, now the way these lasers work, they're kind of interesting is they keep coming back right to a point. I had to make sure I explained this correctly, but it's kind of a neat feature with the two lasers that are in this, and that's what distinctifies it, is the fact that when you get back, the points will converge, and that's actually your 16 and one, and then you'll see the area get wider again. And so I think that's kind of a neat trick because it kind of promotes you to hold it at a more appropriate distance. Now, as far as its bestseller, that's no joke. Here we are on Amazon. If you look, 40,000 reviews, number one bestseller in stock, ships and sold by Amazon. I can't believe this is the number one, but it is. And these devices, there's a few that actually will run off of double A's, but almost all the ones I've seen, almost all of them, run off of nine volt batteries, which is a little bit disappointing. At least it's easy to replace. It's easy to configure to tell you the truth. If you press and hold the backlight button, it changes the whether it's from Celsius to Fahrenheit. And then you can cycle through. If you turn it on and off, it will turn on the laser, but maybe you're in a situation where you might get somebody in the eyes. So you can just double press it, and then it'll turn on the backlight, but cycle off the laser. So I thought that was pretty easy. You have all these different modes. You have max, min, you have average, so I believe if you just sweep across the surface, that'll just build up the average of the area uh, that you swept across. Difference between this temperature and say this temperature. Well, that's interesting. It only said 3.9. Oh, because I clicked it multiple times. Interesting that difference isn't oh there it is you have to hold the trigger but that's kind of a neat thing is it'll tell you the difference in temperature between two different objects you have a mode emiss emissivity emissivity is exactly how these things work and detect temperature it's essentially a calibration and I've done other reviews of these haven't been specific enough I'll be much more specific it is a calibration based on the reflectivity and the specific type of surface and the temperature of that surface when you're particularly metals as the temperature rises the emissivity or the relationship from heat to the type of infrared that this is measuring uh, changes and so what's interesting is that you may have something where at room temperature you have emissivity of 95 and so you have to be aware of, exact, of the general temperatures of what you're trying to measure. If you're doing room temperature measurements or making something, seeing something's too hot to touch or is frozen, versus saying uh, metal working, where you're trying to get metal soft, the emissivity, say, of like brass, will be much different at 500 degrees than it is at room temperature. And so you'd need to be aware of that, saying, okay, I'm working with hot brass, I need to set my sensitivity to that. And the reason it's a big deal is we can see my surface here, it's a leather surface, measuring it's actually giving me a pretty good measurement just because it's dark although i should change my emissivity if i flip this up to the stainless steel table actually it did pretty good right there here we go if you get a particular angle it's actually doing pretty well but sometimes it will give us a jump you just saw it quickly jump right where i unpause it from there it goes 106 97 93 and then you'll get to a more normal spot where it's not reflecting 
or reflecting in a different way. And that's what's wild is this piece of steel is exactly the same temperature as this. And so that's why another reason you have to adjust it. And I'll even really uh, make that sink in by referencing our table of total emissivity. If we just go through all these materials, aluminum, let's go down to something that's actually kind of carbon at room temperature. Uh, unoxidized will be at 81 emissivity, but if it's just lump black, it'll be 95. And we can see it kind of drops. Candle soot is 95. But if it's like sheet, like graphite, we can see it's emissivity is 75. That's a big difference of the very same material. We can also see that the emissivity drops, you know, when graphized, graphitized carbons at 500 degrees Celsius, its emissivity is much lower than it is at 100 degrees Celsius. And if we go over here and, and look at, you know, some other stuff, sand, um, Oh, I wanted to point out this one here, right here, silicon carbide. Silicon carbide, actually, as the hotter it gets, once at 650 degrees Celsius, the emissivity is 0 0.96, where at 150 degrees Celsius, it's only 0.83. So it's actually going in the opposite direction. Even things like snow, granular snow is 0.89, snow fine particles 0.82. So that's really the deal with these meters, as you really need to when you're using these darn things turn that on you really need to adjust emissivity for the temperature range and the specific material that you're using and also you need to be aware that well let me get the laser back on that you know if you're way back here where the two dots converge then that is actually telling you that there's a one inch circle that's actually averaging out so you might want to get closer to get better temperature readings many times that will ruin it and that's one thing you sh I would also like to mention at the very end of this video as I've talked so much and so fast is you can actually ruin these they like to see the heat but they don't like to be in it so if you're trying to measure the temperature a hot engine or exhaust manifold something like that and you're too close the physical radiative heat can damage the sensor see that's one of the reasons why uh, they have these ratios 12 to 1, 16 to 1. Those are just base ratios to make sure you're far enough away from whatever you're measuring so you don't actually damage the unit. And once again, it's something to be aware of. And if you think you've had any issues da with a damaged unit, just heat up something that's preferably black, you know, black painted metal. Take a quick temperature probe, contact measure it or take another one of these meters with the same emissivity setting and just do a quick comparison to make sure it's still accurate. Other than that, uh, I think this one's okay. I think it has a neat trick with those two laser beams, the way they converge. It only goes to a thousand degrees, it's, so I wouldn't consider it a true pyrometer because those tend to go to 2100 degrees or something like 1100 degrees Celsius. Uh, those are the ones where you can measure just absolutely red hot metals. These are just more for everything, anything from cooking. They just don't certify them to be super accurate for taking personal temperatures, say, uh, for screening purposes or something like that. Otherwise, you know, it seems like an okay unit. It actually has some useful modes, which are pretty easy to get through, pretty easy to turn on and off the laser, has a backlight, really easy to adjust the emissivity. And then it has built in, it, for some reason it'll tell you it's built in limits. 1112 is the high and negative 58 is the low. <laughs> there is no emissivity from the sky. If you take a measurement of just the open sky, you'll find that these things will read like outer space temper cold temperatures. But for a number one unit, I think it's okay. I probably talked way too much about it, but since literally tens of thousands of people have bought this thing, I figured I'd put a few words into it. Anyway... <laughs> That's my review of Amazon's number one infrared uh, thermometer. I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Till next time, Caddis Maximus out.